What's good, YouTube? It's your boy R. Welcome back to AM Island Vibes. So, you guys are doing good. I'm doing alright. Back with another reaction video. So, we're gonna be reacting to the most extreme things in the universe, which should be interesting. I think it's say the ultimate guy, whatever it is. But if you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment down below. You know your boy. You know your boy. Um, into science, heavy space, outer space, anything that deals with that. I'm heavy in it, aviation, whatever it is. I'm into that, alright? So that's what we just got going on. Black holes are the most powerful and extreme things in the universe. Facts. Wildly weird and complicated. What would happen if you fell inside one, and what are they really? I always thought about that. Alright, pause. You remember in science class they taught us that nothing's faster than the speed of light. Light is the fastest thing. Um, this is my theory. I don't think that's true. I think light is the fastest thing that we've discovered so far. Like say for example, I feel like since yeah, say for example black holes, right? I'd be like, hey, black holes are what you what you do. Nobody knows exactly what a black hole is actually. To be honest. My theory is that black holes are so fast that light can't escape it. You know what I mean? If that makes sense? Partially, a little bit. This is my theory, what I think of it. So therefore, it's not the fa light is not the fastest thing. That's my theory. So we need to talk about space and time. Space and time are the grand stage where the play of the universe unfolds. But space isn't a fixed stage, and time doesn't tick the same for everyone everywhere. In short, they're relative. Matter bends space, and bent space tells matter how to move. Put some stars and planets on the stage, and it sags underneath them. That misshapen stage, with all its little warps and dips, gives us gravity. Black holes do not just bend the stage, they're like trap doors. Places with so much mass that the universe formed a no-go zone where the rules change. Most black holes form when very massive stars die. We explained this process in detail in our Neutron Star video. Wow. All you need to know now is that in the final moments of really massive, the massive stars, their insides in Fun fact, those who didn't notice, now you know, the sun is actually a non-renewable source. And the sun is the biggest star in our solar system. So, therefore, all stars eventually burn out. So, therefore, the sun is eventually going to burn out, which is going to be billions and millions of years. But, eventually, it's going to, it eventually is going to burn out because it's a star. Will, will we be here? Highly, possibly not. But, eventually, it's going to burn out. It's a star. There you go at nearly a quarter of the speed of light. This packs so much mass so close together, creating something so dense that it sort of breaks the stage of the universe. A black hole with 10 times the mass of the sun would be barely 60 kilometers across. If you look directly at a black hole, it looks like nothing. The space under their control is blocked by an invisible one-way border called the event horizon. The event horizon forms a shell around a region of space that once entered is shielded from the rest of the universe forever. Because the black hole trapdoor deforms space so much, not even light can escape it. See? With Why say? Escaping to transfer information from the inside, it's impossible to tell what it really looks like. We can still observe black holes because of their effect on matter. Things can orbit black holes just as they can orbit the sun or a planet. Many black holes have disks of matter orbiting outside the event horizon. This matter can become incredibly hot as close orbits can speed this matter up to half the speed of light and tiny amounts of friction and collisions between particles heat them to a billion degrees, making the space around these black holes ironically incredibly bright. What would happen if you were to try to get close or even inside a black hole? First of all, you'd see the strangest funhouse mirror in the universe. Matter isn't the only thing orbiting a black hole. Gravity is so strong near them that light can orbit too. If you hovered just outside the event horizon, at the photon sphere, in any direction, you just see yourself. Straight ahead would be the back of your own head, 
as light from your back travels around the black hole to your eyes. Gravity also alters the passage of time itself. The stronger the gravity, the slower time passes. Huh. While you watch the universe above you speed up, those far away will watch you in slow motion. If you chose to fly away from the black hole, you might find that eons have passed for the rest of the universe, a freakish one-way time travel trip to the future where your loved ones are long dead. Wow. But getting close to a black hole can be incredibly dangerous. A painful death by spaghettification awaits you. Because your feet are closer to the black hole than your head, they feel a stronger pull of gravity, enough to pull you apart. As you descend, it gets worse. The pulling gets stronger, your body squeezed thinner and straighter, until you've been reduced to a thin stream of hot plasma, gobbled up in one final slurp, never to be seen again. Spaghettification is only a risk with smaller black holes, since they have much smaller radii. If you go to the center of a galaxy and find a That's ship of the porridge, you might be able to experience crossing the event horizon. As you approach the event horizon, a distant observer would think they never saw you enter it, seeing you stop and fade. The last light you emit, trickling up and out, away from the event horizon. Meanwhile, from your perspective, the void of the black hole rises up to meet you, as light from fewer directions can reach you. The blackness envelops you, until your only view of the universe you left is a tiny spot of light. Here, inside the event horizon, space and time are so horribly broken that real time travel is possible, so it's probably a good thing that nothing gets out. If anything could escape, it could create all sorts of time travel paradoxes and issues that break the universe. As I... as the event horizon is, it keeps us safe from that drama. I don't think black holes are the key to time travel. Really matter, as now there's only the certainty of crushing death in your near future. Inside the event horizon, space-time itself is so bent and warped that whatever direction you move here, Whoa! forward you go, leads only towards the center of the black hole. Trying to go in any direction only brings you to the center faster. To survive the longest, you must do nothing. nothing. In the center of the black hole, we find the singularity, a single point with all the matter that has ever crossed the event horizon, all crushed to a point infinitely small. There is no memory of the things that made it as stuff disappears down the black hole trapdoor forever. The singularity makes all things equal. This actually breaks the universe in really cool ways. We've made a video about this problem if you want to learn more. But in a nutshell, everything that comes too close becomes black hole matter concentrated at the singularity. This lack of a memory of its past means that a black hole has only three properties. It's mass, spin, and electric charge. Everything else is lost. They're a lot like fundamental particles in that respect. This actually means that every single black hole in the universe is, different. is the same. Oh, sure. Their mass is different, and some spin faster than others. Okay, but if different. we were to put all the singularities into a magical physics museum, they'd be identical, like oh. electrons. But just like fundamental particles, the properties of singularities are the best ways we can describe them on paper, rather than an accurate representation of reality. Our current theories about the universe, namely general relativity, are just not able to describe or explain them. Oh gosh! The curvature of space becomes infinite, density becomes infinite, and our rules just don't make sense. The singularity has no surface or size, something like a divide by zero error in the universe. So singularities might not even exist, or be completely different things. But this is all we know right now, from the best prediction we have, from our best current theory of space-time. Mm -hmm. Also, basically everything you've ever heard about black holes, even in this video, is about theoretical black holes, exactly. because their maths is so much easier. Um, but since black holes were born from dying stars that were spinning extremely quickly in their final moments, as far as we know, all black holes in the universe should be spinning right now. As really? in current speeds, too, up to 90% of the speed of light. This means that in reality, black holes are even more screwed up than they usually get credit for. The singularities of rotating black holes are even wilder. The rotation causes them to swell outwards into a sort of ringularity. This rotation is so powerful that space itself is dragged along. 
This creates another region around spinning black holes called the ergosphere, where it's impossible to stay still no matter how hard you try. Like a rushing whirlpool of space-time, the tide is irresistible and the black hole makes you orbit it whether you want to or not. Okay, so what will happen to black holes as the universe ages and dies around them? Again, we don't know, but we have some ideas based on our current understanding of physics. Damn. Hawking radiation. I was just about to say, quantum Stephen Hawking died. The vacuum of space is boiling with Working quantum on fluctuations. These fluctuations are creating matter and antimatter pairs of particles from nothing, which only exist for a very well, short time. Well, it's complex as hell, bro. When this happens near the event when of the black hole, one of these particles can fall in, stopping them from annihilating. The escaping particle is Hawking radiation. Ultimately, the mass of this particle must come from the black hole, so over eons, black holes will shrink and radiate away. Hawking radiation is not the stuff that fell into the black hole, it's new stuff, stealing mass from it. As the black hole shrinks, the Hawking radiation gets stronger, faster and faster, until what's left eventually evaporates in a flash of high-energy radiation like a nuclear bomb. And then, nothing. But that won't happen for a long, long time. A black hole with the mass of our sun has a lifetime of 10 to the power of 67 years. Damn! Which means that it would take 10,000 billion, 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 billion years to lose 0.0000001% of its mass. But most black holes are way more massive than our sun. The most massive supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies have lifetimes of 10 to the power of 100 years. Damn! How is that? Imagine an hourglass filled with one grain of sand for every single particle in the universe. Every 10 billion years, wow. one single grain of sand falls to the bottom. If we waited for all the sand to fall down, not even 1% of the lifetimes of these black holes would have passed. Wow. There is no good concept to help our brains grasp these timescales. The black hole. Will we ever truly understand black holes? Really know what's going on inside them? No one knows. We can only see their outside, and the theories we have probably get their insides wrong. It's but amazing, it's amazing bro. To not know everything. It just means there's still work to be done. It means there are still mysteries to solve and big ideas to think about, which is why humans do science. In the end, we can at least be sure that we still have plenty of time left to think about them before the last Great. one melts away. Yep. If you want to continue thinking about black holes, you can do so by getting one of the many black hole related things the Kutsk Zunk team has made with love. Okay. Like our black hole info. Okay, that's the idea. They, they promote them some stuff. But yeah, that's on black holes, man. I know when girl we used to call her Black Hole. Don't ask me why we used to call her Black Hole. But that was her nickname, Black Hole. But um yeah, interesting. Like with black holes, black holes so complex. Like when Stephen Hawking dies, he was still working on black holes. I guess that well not I guess. I know that that's why they call it the Hawkins radiation. This man was intelligent man, but he couldn't even figure out where the hell a black hole end up. If you go into a black hole, where would you end? I highly doubt you'll join some time traveling nonsense jumbo. I feel so. I feel like you just turn into plasma, like just goo. You know what I mean? Like porridge. That's why I feel like it happened to you. If you happen to go into uh, a what you want to call it, black hole. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you guys are new to the channel. I smash like button, subscribe, comment down below. All love, all peace, all blessings, man. Whatever you say, get for awesome day. Be happy, be blessed. I remember, the world is yours. Peace. I'm out.